people don't hate meetings, they hate unproductive meetings that don't get results. You've likely led or attended meetings that were unproductive. You might have found yourself repeating past discussion items, failing to stay focused on your agenda, struggling with decision-making, and maybe lacking clarity on post-meeting action items. Your time, and the time of all our volunteer leaders, is precious. The Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board would like to help you lead and participate in meetings that are more effective and efficient, utilizing parliamentary procedure. You've likely heard the term before or utilized it in other meetings. Here's a quick refresher, as we want to help you gain confidence in your meeting management skills through a better understanding of parliamentary procedures. Parliamentary procedure is a set of rules for conduct at meetings that allows everyone to be heard and to make decisions without confusion. You may have also heard of Robert's Rules of Order, which is a user-friendly adaptation of parliamentary procedure that we'll be referencing. Following a few basics of parliamentary procedure will allow you to conduct meetings efficiently and reduce common frustrations that result from a poorly run meeting. You'll spend your time on the right issues, as well as assure the minority is heard and the majority wins. How much parliamentary procedure do you need? The answer is, it depends. It depends on the meeting and it depends on the setting. Does the way you conduct meetings hinder rather than facilitate business? Do meetings lack orderly procedures? Does discussion drag on without decisions being made? If your answer to any of these questions is yes, then you will benefit from a review of the basics of parliamentary procedure. Primary skill sets to master are motion procedures and amendment procedures. These are the two most common skills used in Iowa corn meetings. What is a motion? A motion is a formal proposal by a member in a meeting that the group takes specific action. This person is generally referred to as the mover. The four basic steps to a motion include the motion is made, it is seconded, it is discussed, and then the motion is voted upon. It is helpful if the motion is well-worded and succinct. Listen to this example. I make a motion to purchase another Iowa corn trailer. Even though the topic may be worthy of discussion, you can already tell the motion itself is going to cause meeting confusion and waste everyone's precious time. You simply don't have enough information. The motion isn't clear. Think of a motion as your ask. It should state clearly what you want to accomplish. Put it through this filter. Can someone who wasn't at the meeting understand your intent and your desired outcome by reading the motion? For example, if the motion is passed in an Iowa Corn Committee, the motion is included in the committee minutes and part of the board packet. The committee chair reports the committee minutes to the board for board adoption. Once adopted, it goes into the action motion report. Can board members understand your intent and desired outcome by reading your motion? Make sure you include details such as the what, the who, the when, how much money is being requested and from what budget or account. Think ahead to potential questions and objections. The better worded the motion is when presented, the clearer your intent, and the less likely your motion will be subjected to amendments which may dilute your original intent. The motion should begin like this. I move to. We don't say, I make a motion. And again, think through clearly what you want to accomplish. If possible, craft the language of the motion in advance. Ask for feedback from peers to assure it is specific yet concise. Let's try that earlier example again. I move to allocate up to $30,000 to update the interior of the Iowa Corn Mobile Educational Trailer. Funds will come out of the Iowa Corn Mobile Education Center line item for fiscal year 21-22. A motion must be seconded by someone other than the mover before discussion. A second is not necessarily an endorsement of the motion, but ensures that at least one other person thinks the motion should be discussed. The purpose of requiring a second is to prevent time being wasted by having to discuss and deal with a motion that only one person wants to see introduced. You can simply say, I second the motion. I move to second. Second. If no second is immediately heard, the chair asks, is there a second to the motion? Without a second, the motion is lost and simply does not come before the group. 
If this happens, the chair states that as the case and moves on to the next item of business. If a second to the motion is received, the chair says, it is moved and seconded that, and then reads the motion. It is now time to discuss the motion. For Iowa Corn meetings assure you are speaking clearly and you can be heard across the meeting space. Smaller meetings will often run less formally and with a free flow of discussion. In more formal meetings adhering more strictly to parliamentary procedure, the chair will initially recognize the mover to speak on behalf of the motion, including the reason behind it. Others request to be recognized by the chair and receive permission before speaking for or against the motion. Regardless of formality, be concise with your comments and be cautious of simply saying the same thing someone has already said, but in a different way. This habit is a key offender in bogging down discussion and causing frustration amongst the group. Discussion is the time to seek and hear contrary opinion. Respectful debate is desired. However, if it seems like debate is going in circles and nothing new is being brought to the table, you can move to call the question after being recognized by the chair, which stops debate. This call must have a second, then the chair takes an immediate vote. It takes two-thirds of the voting members in favor to cut off debate. Therefore, it's preferred the chair take the vote by show of hands and not by voice. If this motion is passed, the chair will immediately call for a vote on the motion. If the motion fails, debate and discussion continue. The chair will likely ask, are you ready to vote on the motion? As discussion winds down. Once it is determined the group is prepared to vote, the chair will restate the motion for clarity and then state the method of voting that will be used. Commonly, this vote is by voice, raised hand, or electronic device. The chair will first call for those in favor. Then they will pause for affirmative responses. Next, the chair calls for those against. Again, they pause for the response. Finally, the chair announces results. Majority always wins on main motions unless otherwise stated ahead of time in your bylaws or when basic rights of members are involved. A two-thirds vote is required for any motion that deprives a member of rights in any way, such as when debate is cut off, as we mentioned earlier. The chair or any member may call for a vote recount by standing or raising of hands. This is known as call for division and is used if the count is unclear or in question. The request is not debatable, does not require a vote, and is the right of all members. The vote on the motion is again called by the chair, who announces if the vote passes or fails. As a quick look back, the four basic steps of a motion include making the motion, getting a second, which allows discussion, and then voting on the motion. Knowledge Check A motion requires a. Less detail so discussion creates the final language, b. A second, c. Detail like the who, what, and when to inform the intent of the motion, d. All of the above, e. Both b and c. The correct answer is e. A motion requires a second, and detail creates clarity, allowing someone to make the second and for the group to begin active discussion on the motion as you intended it. True or false? It is appropriate to shout question if you think debate has gone on too long. False. You must be recognized by the chair before you call the question. Then it needs a second and a two-third vote to close discussion on the motion. There are times that a poorly worded original motion or a dynamic discussion of the motion leads to a need or a desire to modify the motion before voting. This is known as an amendment. An amendment must be relevant to the motion it seeks to amend. The three basic processes of amendments are to move to insert a word or paragraph, to move to strike a word or paragraph, or move to insert and strike words or paragraphs. The language of an amendment follows this structure. I move to amend motion A by inserting, striking out, striking out and inserting, as follows. An amendment to a motion also requires a second and can be discussed before a vote is called. To pass, the amendment must carry a majority vote. If it fails, the original motion stands as is. If it passes, the amended motion replaces the original motion. 
this new motion still needs to be voted on by the whole group. One of the most common mistakes in meetings is forgetting to vote on the main motion after the amendment passes. Less formal meetings may utilize the friendly amendment technique. A motion may be amended as a friendly amendment if both the mover and second of the main motion agree to the amended language. If they do not, the amended motion is voted on and then the board returns to the main motion. This usually occurs when group discussion leads to a consensus for a slight change to the original motion with the maker agreeing. This technique does not follow Robert's rules of order and should be avoided at more formal or high-stakes meetings. Knowledge check. True or false? An amendment to a motion requires a vote. True. True or false? Once an amendment to a motion is passed, a vote is no longer needed on the motion itself. False. This is a commonly missed vote. Your two most important parliamentary procedure skill sets are making a motion and amending a motion. You can learn as you go with the remainder.